Okay, well, that's 10 a.m. So I think we'll just make a start. And if people join us a wee bit later, between myself and Brian that's on the call with us, we can just let them in um, to the meeting. So thanks very much for joining. This is our, I think, second last Computing Science Scotland session of the week. It's been a really busy week and we've saw a fantastic um, amount of participation from all across the country. Today we have signed up for this session 260 boys and girls from 29 of Scotland's 32 local authorities. So we've got children signed up from nearly every single area of Scotland. So that's really, really exciting. If you would like to, you can leave your cameras on um, during this session, but please do mute your microphones. We are expecting quite a lot of people to join um, and we want to all be able to hear Isabella, our special guest, who I'll introduce you to in just a little moment. The session has been recorded, so don't worry too much about um, taking notes or if you miss anything or if your connection drops, because we will share a link to the recording with you at some point next week. So the name of this session is Unplugged Explorations with Barefoot Computing. At early and first level, computing science is about understanding how digital technology works and beginning to understand the processes or instructions that we need to make it work. And it's a bit about creating these instructions or processes of our own. And we do this through computational thinking. And that includes skills like problem solving, logical reasoning, understanding order, patterns, which we're going to focus on today, and sequences. Now, hopefully all the grown-ups on our call will have had a chance to watch the Barefoot Getting Started video, and you might have already downloaded some of the resources that we're going to use today, or you might have identified what other resources that you want to use to create patterns. Spotting and creating patterns and using patterns is really important um, and it's an important part of problem solving and that's a skill that helps us when we're making instructions or you may heard, have heard of algorithms. An algorithm is a set of instructions or rules that makes something happen and to create a really good algorithm like this hand washing one, it helps if we can spot and make patterns. And I'm going to stop now because our special guest, Isabella, is going to take over. So have lots of fun and we can't wait to see all the patterns that you come up with. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Eva. Hi, morning, everyone. My name is Isabella and I'm here from Barefoot this morning. Uh, lovely to be with you. Lovely to see you today. Um, I'm actually not in Scotland. I'm actually down in London. So that's where I'm talking to you from. Um, and today we're going to, as you just heard, have a think and a look all about pattern. So I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see what's on my screen. And perhaps Eva can just let me know when you can see my uh, slides. That would be okay. Fabulous. Okay, we've got them now. Thank you, Isabella. Brilliant. Okay, so adults, I think lots of you have um, probably already seen the Barefoot website already, or perhaps you've got a link to it. If you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, um, you can do that perhaps afterwards. But there are lots and lots of resources available uh, to support your children with computational thinking on there. So I've just popped the website on there for you. Um, and downloading the resources will remind you at the end, but all of the resources we're going to look at today are from the Winter Warmers set. And there are tons and tons of resources available for um, ages four to six and further up, all the way up to age 11. Uh, and there's actually a set of resources for every season. But today, because I don't know about you, but in London, it's getting pretty cold here. Today, we're going to do some of our winter activities. Um, so what I'd like us to start off by thinking about is pattern. Now, that word might be familiar to you already. Um, I'm going to think about what patterns I can see around myself. Now, we can find patterns sometimes indoors. We can find patterns outdoors. 
I've put a few pictures on the screen of different patterns that I've seen as I travel around. Uh, some of those, you might be able to guess what they are. So have a little look at the ones on my screen and perhaps it with your classes and your teachers. See if you can uh, work out what any of those patterns are. Now, if at any time today, children, you um, want to share what you're talking about with us, you can just pop that in the chat. So perhaps if you can work out what any of those patterns are, you could maybe pop that in the chat. So I'll give you a, a minute or so to have a chat with your adult about what you can see there. swirly one's interesting down the bottom in the middle well yeah and actually that one is interesting because that is a pattern from nature i don't know if anyone's managed to figure out what that one is yet but patterns aren't always in things that have been made lots of the things in, the, in these pictures have been made by someone or machines um but actually there's loads of patterns in nature so that might be a really nice thing for you to try with your adults um when you're thinking about pattern Look at all the patterns you can see in nature. I don't know if anyone spotted that that one with the leaf on top. That's actually a, a tree trunk a pattern of a tree trunk. When it, when the tree trunk's been cut, you see beautiful patterns in trees and leaves and flowers and all sorts of things. Um, so some of you might have spotted that we can see the, the floor um, tiles there. We can see bricks. They give a great pattern. Usually bricks are um laid very carefully and stacked very carefully in a pattern we've got some roof tiles there on the top and the right um very neatly stacked into a pattern um and we've got some glass tiles we've got our tree and then we've got a, a picture of some fabric a bit like um, a tablecloth or something and actually i was thinking some of you might even have patterns on your school uniforms um but we'll talk about patterns you can spot around you in a sec um so lots of different patterns there um when we think about pattern, we're looking for things that are the same and things that are different. So if I have a look at that piece of material, the red and white checked one in the bottom right hand corner there, I can see it's made up of squares and I can see all the squares are the same size, um, but they're not all red, are they? Some are red, some are white and some are a kind of pinky light red colour. And they've been arranged really carefully so that there's a, they follow a pattern. So in some of the lines we can see it goes, um, if we say that light red, white, light red, white, light red, white. And um, some, some patterns that we see are a bit more simple than others, like the, the roof tiles we can see there at the top. They're all the same. They're just laid out very carefully in a very careful order. So we can have different types of patterns. And what I'd like you to do now is wherever you are, whether you're in a classroom or at home or wherever you are, I'd like you to look around your, your um, area where you are and I'd like you to see if you can see any examples of patterns. Now, you might have to look quite carefully here. You might have to look around you, but you might want to look up and you might want to look down uh, and you might even want to look at your clothes. Some of you might have patterns on your clothes. So I'm going to give you a few moments to do that. And then if you can um, pop some ideas in the chat of patterns you can see, and then perhaps we'll share some. So if you take a few minutes to do that with your adult and see which patterns you can spot around. I'm going to do the same while you're doing that. Perhaps Eva, when our ideas start coming in, you can let me know uh, some of the patterns we can see. Yes, I will. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. And while we're waiting, I have just spotted this stripy pattern. I've got a little basket here with all my pens and pencils and scissors and stationery bits and bobs in it. And it has a little stripy pattern. Ah, Well, I've also spotted a stripy pattern on my curtains, funnily enough. Um, and I've got a kind of wood floor that's laid out very carefully in tiles, uh, some kind of planks of wood, and they're laid very carefully in a pattern too. Sometimes we don't even notice pattern, but actually it's usually all around us, isn't it? 
Mm-hmm. I've also got a, a radiator, a cover over my radiator, which has a lovely pattern of um, circles and triangles which I've never really even noticed before. But now that I'm looking for it, I'm seeing patterns everywhere. No, I have just spotted a very Scottish pattern. Ah. Um, and it's on a photograph here um, of my little boy. And he's wearing a tartan um, little suit. I don't know if you can see that. So that's a very Scottish pattern. So we've that's... got some comments coming now. Great. So we have stripy pattern on the carpet. Someone has spotted a stripy pattern on the carpet in Mr or Mrs Reed's um, class and Mrs Waddle's class. They're just typing away just now. So let's see what they have spotted. A basket, a spotty cushion, flags and also now this is important for our younger learners mark making patterns oh that's a great one isn't it yeah and also patterns don't have to be written down do they sometimes patterns are in they could be written down but we can really make patterns out of anything i mean later on we'll have a little try um but there's lots of things we can arrange into patterns aren't there Mm. What else can I think of? I can see a lovely photo frame here that's got a pattern all around the edge. I love the tartan example, though. That's a great Scottish pattern, isn't it? It is. Lots of tartan in Scotland. Fabulous. All right. Well, you can keep typing if you're still typing into the chat. But um, thank you for the, for um, noticing those patterns and spotting those patterns because really when we start to think about pattern the first thing we can do is spot patterns around us um, and once we can spot patterns that can help us maybe think about our own patterns so um, I have got here for you we're just going to move on but if you're still if you're still typing then please just finish off what you're typing into the chat um, I have got some pictures coming up for you and as I mentioned, it's pretty cold down here in London. Um, I don't know if it's cold up there in Scotland, but I have got some pictures of some snowmen. And these snowmen are very special because think about what we put around a snowman's neck usually or often if we make a snowman. Mm, what is that? I have got some pictures of snowmen scarves. So these snowmen have all got scarves on, but there's something really special about these snowmen scarves so I'm going to show you a couple of different ones so let's have a look at the first one this is my first snowman he looks pretty happy doesn't he he doesn't look too cold um but this is our first snowman and I'd like you to take a close look at his scarf and if you notice anything special about it I'd like you to talk about it with your adult and then pop it into the chat so what is special about his scarf remember we're talking about pattern. I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay, has anyone noticed anything? Have we got anything coming in yet, Eva? Not yet. I think everybody's busy thinking and discussing what they can see here. Excellent. Okay, well, I've noticed. Did you notice anything, Eva, about this one? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, I can see two different shapes that are being repeated on this pattern. Absolutely. Well done. So, I think you can probably see that on the first part of the pattern, we can see a red background with a kind of greeny bluish, it's a funny colour, isn't it? Star. And then we've got a, a purpley spot. So it goes star, spot, star, spot. And if we carry on down the scarf, star, spot, star, and then it stops. So this is a repeating pattern, isn't it? So we have um, one design, the star, and then the spot, and then the star, and then the spot. So we've got two designs and they alternate. That just means they kind of take it in turns. So that's a, a great example of a pattern. Some of you might even have scarves like this. We do often see patterns on wintry items like scarves and gloves and hats and things like that. Let's look at our next snowman. Take a look at his scarf 
and see if you can spot the pattern on that one. And if you'd like to pop it into the chat, you're very welcome. Okay, can you see anything uh, uh, on that one, Eva? Do you notice anything that's repeating? Yeah, I do. I can see a blue background with a white triangle, and then a white background with a red square, and then it repeats again, a blue background with a white triangle and a white background with a red square. Yeah, and if we sometimes we think we've spotted the pattern, don't we? Even when we just look at it quickly, but then it's a really good idea just to check that we're definitely right. So you're you are definitely right. So we've got the triangle, the square, the triangle, the square. We can keep checking just to double check we're right. The triangle, square, triangle. Brilliant. So even sometimes I like to say the pattern out loud because then I can um when I hear my voice say it, sometimes that helps me work out what the pattern is. All right, let's have a take uh, have a look at this snowman this happy chappy snowman um <clears throat> take a moment with your with your classes and see if you can spot a pattern there hopefully you're getting quite used to this by now we'll give you a, a couple of minutes All right, what do you think, Eva? Anything on that one? Yeah, so this time I can see two different shapes repeated. So we've got a green background with, and now we could say two white stripes, or we could maybe say two very thin rectangles. Mm. And then a white background with a red hexagon. And then that repeats another one, two times, two and a half times. <laughs> Absolutely, well done. So those patterns were all quite similar, weren't they? They had one shape and another shape and one shape and another shape and one shape and another shape. So once we had worked out what that was, we could easily continue it. Now, this one that I'm going to show you is slightly different. So it's a little bit of a challenge. I wonder if you can take a look at this snowman scarf and see if you can spot the pattern. You might want to say it aloud if you uh, if that helps you spot the pattern. For anyone that's just joined that has just came in, please feel free to use the, the chat box um, to pop in the children's answers. Eva, what do you think? This one's a little bit trickier. It is a little bit trickier, so it was definitely helping me to see the pattern out aloud. So I was saying blue, blue, green circle, blue, blue, green circle. Absolutely. So that was it, it was a bit trickier, wasn't it? Because it wasn't that kind of on off pattern. We had two the same and then one different Two the same and then one different. Yeah, well done. So remember, when we're looking at patterns, we're spotting what's the same and also what's different and that helps us to spot a pattern so when we're thinking about pattern for the adults when we're thinking about pattern we usually start with spotting patterns um, and then we can move on to continuing patterns so that's what we're going to have a look at now and some of you might have um printed uh the these um printouts of the scarves for your children if you have, great, and we're going to use them now. If you haven't, don't worry, because we can do it all on the screen together. Um, but I'm going to show you some uh, scarf patterns, and we're going to see if we can continue the pattern, because now we're pretty good at spotting patterns. Our next step is to try continuing the pattern. So here's my first snowman scarf. And um, you can see it's a similar design, actually, to the, the scarves that you've just seen. Um, <clears throat> so Take a look with your uh, children, take a look with your adult. And can you see this pattern is only half finished? So we've got the first one, two, three, four of those rectangles are, are patterned, but actually we've still got four to go. 
Now, you might be doing this uh, now, like on the board, but you might also want to do this activity afterwards with your children. So we'll remind you where the printout is. But for now, let's have a look at that and see if we can predict what's going to come next. I'll give you a moment to do that. So you might want to pop your answer into the chat. Remember, saying it out loud might help. Eva, any thoughts on what might come next? So I think I would maybe continue this pattern by choosing red rectangle, turquoise, red rectangle, and then turquoise, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think I would probably do the same. Well done. That's one of those more simple patterns, isn't it? When it's one and then the other, and then one and then the other. And those ones actually um, are, are quite uh, nice for us to work out. OK, let's try this one. This is one of those slightly more challenging ones. So again, have a look at what comes next. So in your classrooms, be talking about maybe say it out loud. We've got three um, blank rectangles to fill, haven't we, on this scarf pattern? So take a look at what's already there and see if you can work out those three blank ones. Eva, any ideas? Well, I've got to decide, do I want a green circle next or do I want to colour the rectangle in all blue? So I think it looks like it's going blue, green circle, green circle, blue, green circle, green circle. So I think I would go blue next, blue, green circle, green circle. Absolutely. And saying it makes it really much easier, doesn't it? Because it you does. Can make that pattern in your head as well. Absolutely. Um, OK, great. Final one. <laughs> this is getting more challenging now because we've got lots of different colours and shapes. So for the adults on the call, um, uh, you can see how the pattern can develop. So starting with something quite simple and then moving to something quite challenging. So obviously you decide what's best for your children. Um, I'll give you a couple of minutes to look at this one because it is a bit tricky. We've got four um rectangles to fill so that might help you work out um how how to to say it out loud if you like i'll give you a moment to do it OK, any thoughts, Eva, because there's quite a lot going on in this one, isn't there? Oh, there is this time. I wonder if the boys and girls that are joining us, if they're able to put their microphones on, mm. they could maybe say this with me to help me. That would be great. So, yeah, feel free, everyone, to pop your microphones on. So what can I see first? Turquoise, two red squares, two red squares, green rectangle turquoise, two red squares, two red squares, green rectangle. OK, so now this is the tricky part. I need to continue this. Turquoise, two red squares, two red squares, green rectangle. Absolutely. That was so much to remember, <laughs> wasn't it? So much because there were kind of four blocks in our pattern. Some of them were the same. Some of them were different. So the patterns that we, we spot or even that we make ourselves can be quite complicated. So perhaps when you're going to have a go at making your own patterns, you can see if you can make them really tricky. I quite like to make a pattern for someone else, for a partner or a friend to spot. And then they have to spot the um, pattern and then I can let them know if they were right or not. That's quite fun. Um, but well done if you got that one, children, because that was really tricky. Um, so now it's going to be time for you to make your own scarf pattern. So just for the adults, 
we had a go at um, spotting some patterns. Then we had a go at continuing some patterns. And now we're going to have a go at creating our own pattern. And that's a really good kind of structure to, to think about when we're, when we're learning about pattern. So um, the way you make your scarf pattern or, or your pattern that you're going to make is, is up to you. So your, your adult will let you know how that's going to work. You might have those sheets that we just saw that you can fill in. You might just have some paper that you can make your own pattern on. And it might look like a scarf or it might look like something else. Um, I quite like to sometimes make patterns with stamps. So if I don't want to draw, I can just use stamps to make patterns. Um, and uh, sometimes things like uh, bricks or cubes that we can join together. Like those little multi-link cubes if you have those. Um, make quite a nice pattern, any sort of little objects in your classroom, really. So probably when, as you're looking around your classroom or your home or your setting, you'll you'll be able to think, oh, yeah, actually, I could we could make a pattern with that. So you're going to have uh, let's check the time. You're going to have about five minutes to see if you can come up with your own pattern. Now, this might be individually that the children are doing or it might be that you're all making one as a class. And what we'd really love is in about five minutes, if you're um, happy to put on, um, to show on your cameras the patterns that you've made, that would be really, really lovely if you're happy to. Um, so does that sound like that's going to work, Eva? Does that sound good? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And feel free to pop cameras on as well, if you can, um, if you have access to a camera on the device you're using, because we would love to be able to see you all working away. Absolutely. OK, so we're going to say five minutes, um, children, and see what pattern you can come up with. Some of these snowmen that I've put on the slide have got patterns on their scarves, too. I like the spotty one. I like spotty patterns. Mm. I was also thinking, I don't know if any of you like follow sports teams, but sometimes um, sports teams have patterns in their, um, what are we calling them? Kits. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> in their sports kits. And sometimes, you know, like at football matches and things, you might see people with patterned scarves and hats and things in the, in the team's colours. So sometimes sports teams make uh, patterns from their kits. And I know you're working away, but I, I'm still thinking about pattern here. Um, the in the spring, we're actually going to make a new um, barefoot resource that the adults um, on the call will be able to share with their children. And that's all about um, people who help us, the topic of people who help us. And there are some lovely activities in there for spotting pattern in things like um, emergency vehicles. Like if you imagine like a, a police car often has a pattern along the side or uh, an ambulance often has a pattern, sometimes like squares and stripes. So I think we can even see pattern on, on vehicles I bet when you go home today, you're going to be looking around and seeing what pattern you can spot. Because pattern is all around us. I was just thinking of things that we eat that have pattern as well, Isabella. Oh, that's a good idea. What <laughs> did you think of? I was thinking of lollipops. Sticks of rock and some ice lollies. Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and when you said that, I started to think about a waffle. You know, those waffles that, that have like squares on them, like a grid. They've kind of got a pattern, haven't they? We're all going to be very hungry after this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, children, when you have your lunch today, you can see if there's any patterns. You might have a pattern on your plate or on your tray. Um, Yeah, or in your food. Maybe you could make a pattern from your lunch. Although don't spend too long doing it because you, you might get told off. 
All right, we have a couple more minutes with our with our patterns. And then it would be great to see what you've made. Also, I know that we're talking about patterns we can see, aren't we? But sometimes when we're thinking about computational thinking um, that Eva mentioned before, not just patterns we can see, sometimes we have patterns like um, patterns in time and things like that. So, you know, like our what we do in the day, how we kind of uh, get up, we might come to school, might do some learning, might have lunch, do some more learning. Um, that's a bit like a pattern, isn't it? Because we do that every day or most days. Um, so we also have patterns in, in the things that we do and things like um, the seasons are also a nice pattern, aren't they? Because we always have our four seasons, winter and spring and summer and autumn and then it goes back to winter again doesn't it and it starts the pattern all over again winter and spring and summer and autumn so that kind of follows a pattern even children if you think about the days of the week they're a pattern aren't they monday is always followed by tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and then we're always back to monday again so there's so many patterns in our lives and um, they're actually really important to us all right. I think if we um, if we would like to, we can hold up or show our patterns that we've made on on screen. That would be mm -hmm. fab. Feel free to pop the cameras on to be able to do that. That would be super. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, I've got my background on, so mine's is all a little bit a little bit blurry. But there, we can see it a bit better. So I went for green triangle, pink rectangle, purple diamond, pink spotty rectangle, pink spotty rectangle, green triangle, pink rectangle, purple diamond. So I added in some spots um, in there as well to the shapes just to make it that little bit more interesting. Fabulous. That's quite a complicated pattern you've done there, Eva, isn't it? Well done. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Have we got anyone else's to have a look at? I can't see you right now because I'm looking at my slides. Um, no, not yet. We've got no cameras on at the moment. Um, okay. I'm sure everyone is very busy making patterns in their homes or nurseries or classrooms. Absolutely. And don't forget, if you don't have time to do it on the call now, this might be something that you can think about how you would do um, maybe next week or coming up to uh, coming more into winter. Perhaps you can have a look at the um, winter activities and maybe print off the scarf um, template so that your children can complete it. Um, and then maybe even design your own patterns. Now, what we would really love um is if you do do some fabulous work which i'm sure you will and learning about pattern or actually about any of the um barefoot resources we would love to see them so um lots of you might be watching this um after it, um the call's finished as a recording and we would still love to see all your work even if you couldn't join us live on the call so on the slide, I've put um, our little Twitter or X handle. So at Barefoot Comp, we're on X and on uh, Instagram. So um, if you would like to share the work that your children do with us, we would love to see it. So all you need to do is tag it with, with Barefoot Comp and um, we'll be able to see it and then we'll be able to share it for you and um, give you some comments on it. It would be really lovely because we love seeing people enjoying using our resources and having fun with them. So I think, um, should we just give a moment for, for questions, Eva, maybe? Yeah, uh, that sounds really good. So if people have questions, then please do pop them into the chat. Um, but I think uh, I was just going to give you a quick reminder about the web link to use to download the resources. So remember the resources that we've been using today are from the winter warmers activity set. 
And actually in our um, season set, so we've got one for, for all seasons, there's three activities in each. So Scarves for Snowmen is just one of the three winter activities. Um, so there's a few nice ones. There's making an igloo, which is quite fun uh, in that one too. Um, but all of the um, resources can be downloaded from the, the link that you see on the um, screen there. And also, some of you might have already seen our computational thinkers poster, um, but you can download that. So we have a special one of those for early years and we have one for primary too, if, if, uh, for the older children, sorry, if we um, are teaching those. Um, and that's got all of our concepts, Eva mentioned some of these at the beginning of the call, and all of our approaches on there. And they're really good ways to um, think about computational thinking when you're doing your, your planning for, for your learning. Um, because actually, lots of these things you will be doing already. So computational thinking is nothing new. It's just part of all the fabulous activities that you're doing already. But hopefully this poster um, helps you realise um, where it can fit. So that poster you can also download from the same web link. And there's lots more information for um, adults at that web link too. And we'll send a follow up email out as well with the link on it, too. So don't worry too much about trying to note that down. Great. Right. Let me see if I can stop sharing so that I can see you. Perfect. All right. Uh, well, I hope that you enjoy children doing that uh, patterns activity. For Scars for Snowmen and um, I really look forward to seeing some of your work hopefully. Oh thank you so much Isabella I'm sure I can say on behalf of everyone um, that had joined our session this morning that was so much fun thank you and who knew that pattern was a really important part of computational thinking and working with patterns is something that we do a lot of, don't we? And it might be, like yeah. we said, with our loose parts. It might be when we're mark making. We even might make patterns with junk boxes when yeah. we're gluing. And yeah. I had a little thought there about some another way that we could make patterns if we had absolutely no resources. Could we use our bodies to make patterns? That would be good. Uh, that would we, be good. We could also <laughs> perhaps make patterns with our voices, couldn't we? We absolutely could, because, or with musical instruments. Yeah, I was thinking that because pattern is so important in music as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I could talk about pattern all day and I probably <laughs> will be thinking about pattern now for the rest of the day. <laughs> so um, hopefully you might uh, remember to think about it too as you, <laughs> as you go around. Okay, thank you very much, Isabella. So just a couple of end slides and we will share these with you as well. Um, so it was just really to ask the, the grown-ups on the call, did you spot all the numeracy and mathematical concepts in this activity? Um, you know, we know it can be found in all areas of the curriculum, as can computational thinking. Um, and realising the ambition reminds us about you know, how curious children are about the environment surrounding them. Um, they want to know how things work, they want to use problem solving skills and just really they're naturally um, inclined to be able to explore through cause and effect. Um, and as we know, numeracy is not just about being able to count, it's about developing number sense, um, which encourages creativity of thought and allows children to interact with the world around them. Um, and that's just a little quote I've popped up on screen there from Realising the Ambition. And it just goes on to say um, that numeracy is not only about developing these skills, it's about having the ability to apply these concepts in all areas of life. Um, and I'm sure that you can see from the, the activity and the discussions today that the children will be talking about and spotting patterns um, all around them um, from now on. And I'll share these with you um, via email, but we were just highlighting the experiences, experiences and outcomes in the technologies curriculum for early and first level um, in relation to computing science and what that might look like. 
We'll also send you a link to the evaluation form. We'd really, really appreciate your time if you could fill out the form for us and let us know what you thought of the session because it's you that helps shape our future sessions. So we use these to plan all future sessions. So if you would like to see more of these create along type sessions for the children um, where you can learn alongside them, um, do pop that in. And that that is it from us. We've we finished just five minutes early, so I'm I'm here. I can stay around if anyone wants to ask any questions or pop their microphones on or indeed their cameras too. That would be fantastic. And we would love to hear what you thought of the activity.